Hello everybody. So I made a favorites video right at the beginning of lockdown and we are not at the end of lockdown by any means, but we are several months into it. And so I thought I would make another favorites video of some things that I have been enjoying. Just show off some stuff to you and recommend some things. I used to do favorites videos like every goddamn month, but I felt like it put a lot of pressure on me to kind of consume a lot of things in order to tell you about it. So I quite like this just seasonal, every now and then favorites. After I've like had enough time to consume enough stuff that I can actually pick the favorite rather than just like giving you a rundown of everything I read and everything that I watched and listened to. These things are actually like boop at the top. I have a headache. I'm exhausted. I also got married. I think this is actually the first video that you are seeing across either of my YouTube channels where me in the video is a married woman. Wild. Honestly, marriage is still an abstract concept <laughs> to me. I'm like, what? I have a husband? Anyway, I guess that's a favorite. Marriage. Well, actually, is it? Being married to Dan is a favorite. But in traditional fashion, we are starting with books. So I narrowed it down to three favorite books that I have read in lockdown, honestly, currently, in a bit of a reading slump. But I still have like read a lot over the course of lockdown so far. So the first is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. It's just stunningly written. It is beautiful. It tells the story of 12 different black women, each of them get a chapter from their perspective and they're all kind of slightly connected in different ways and you just get little insights into their lives and it's stunning, it's really eye-opening about just like the huge vast experiences of race and gender and the different ways that individuals react to all of those different issues. It's beautiful would recommend. My next favorite is a bit of a cheat because it's like more than one book and it is Heartstopper, which is a graphic novel by Alice Osman and it's just about two teenage boys who fall in love. It's so cute. I bought this one myself, um, but volume two and I also have volume three were gifted to me by the publishers. I've read these two so far. I haven't read volume three yet, but I will be doing that shortly. Honestly, like it just fills you with that exact feeling of like having a crush, like the early stages of a relationship, just like, just all of those like joyous feelings of like your heart skipping a beat every time that they text you. Like you are physically having those feelings in your body when you are reading this. At least that's what the experience was for me. Beautiful. And then my final book favorite, I don't have a physical copy of it. I listened to the audiobook version and it is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a sci-fi story about a group of misfits, chosen family vibes. They're on a spaceship, they've gotta do a job and they've gotta trek across space to go do it. But it's mostly just like about the universe that they live in, about their relationships with each other, but also their relationships with like their family or their friends from their home planets. Oh, it's so good, so exciting. Honestly, the like philosophy of that world and the politics of that world, I'm also really into. If I got to choose a species to be a part of culturally, if I got to pick like one of the, the cultures, it would be Sissixes. What are they called? What are they called? Honestly, I've forgotten. But Sissix, the character Sissix, her species, I would choose to be one of them. That would be great. Screw the humans, am I right? But it is fantastic. It is so fast paced. It is like adventure, but all of these amazing characters. And also it just is a perfect example of how you can explore really human topics, politics, identity, like all of these different things, but through sci-fi, like sci-fi is just such a great medium for those things. And I'm only just 
really discovering that now. So I think I need to consume more sci-fi because that element of the sci-fi that I've read so far, like that really, really appeals to me. So any recommendations, let me know. So next I have some TV favorites and up there is I May Destroy You. I know I've talked about this a lot, but it's just really stuck with me. And I think that's why it's like a favorite. I just keep thinking about it. To me, it kind of has Fleabag-esque vibes where the ending kind of makes the series as a whole. And it's one that as soon as it's over, you're like, what the, I need to rewatch. I need to like understand all of the different layers here. I May Destroy You is a really difficult watch, especially in relation to sexual violence and trauma. But ultimately it is a story of somebody healing somebody like dealing with that and the like messy messy painful journey that that is another tv favorite is the netflix documentary love on the spectrum i really enjoyed it it's about autistic people and dating and relationships and i just thought it was really sweet. I thought the inclusion of the like dating coach and the relationship expert who works with autistic people to like help them make connections with people. I thought that was really interesting. I hadn't considered that that would be a thing. And then I really loved the inclusion of the people who weren't like single and seeking love, but the people who were in relationships and seeing their relationship dynamic and their love and like especially like the first couple that you see together i thought they were so funny the guy in that relationship as well i thought he was hilarious he was like a joker i was like i want to be your friend you're like you're very funny and cool i thought it was a really good documentary but i would be interested to hear what people who are autistic thought of it because there might be a lot of stuff that i did not pick up on so I'm keen to hear other people's perspectives and thoughts on that as well. But I really loved it. Moving on to films. I have actually watched a lot of films during lockdown, but mostly re-watches. But my favorite <laughs> that I'm putting out there is Eurovision Song Contest, Fire Saga. <laughs> Honestly, this film is hilarious. The songs are great. Cannot stop listening to the soundtrack. It's wonderful. And I think the reason that I'm putting it as a favorite though, is normally in my relationship, I'm the one who like gets obsessive over culture and like media and like gets all consumed by them. And Dan doesn't really get very excited by things, doesn't really care. However, Eurovision Song Contest Fire Saga, he's like watched four times, has like the soundtrack on repeat. Like he is, more obsessed with it than me. And it's the most obsessed I've ever seen him <laughs> with anything. And honestly, it took me as a surprise. I was like, really? Of all the things, this is the thing that has suddenly sparked an obsession for you? But hey, he loves it. No judgment here. So that film has become like a staple in our household. And now Dan and I like say things to each other like, I'm checking you out, I'm checking you out. And then I said to Dan, I want, <laughs> I want him to say to me, you are most exciting woman. <laughs> Honestly, we keep quoting each other. It's hilarious. I like the film is great. It's fine. It's like a funny film with songs in it, which, you know, I always love. But I just think that it's a favorite just because of the dynamic that it's created with me and Dan and like lots of lots of jokes and lots of quoting it and lots of singing it. So good work. Oh, I feel like I should also put in a music favorite here, which is in reality, Iceland's Eurovision song entry this year, Think About Things. That also, great song. Dan and I sing it all of the time. Love it. And the music video, chef's kiss. So there you go. There's a music favorite as well. And I guess if we're talking about music now, music favorite, Taylor Swift, folklore. I mean, that's all I've been listening to really. That and Fire Saga. <laughs> My favorite songs on it are Seven and August, but I just kind of, Love the whole thing, it's stunning. Okay, next I have some podcast favorites. I listened to the New York Times podcast called Rabbit Hole. It's like an eight parter all about far right, alt right radicalization on YouTube. 
What a jolly topic. But yeah, the podcast itself also feels like a bit of a rabbit hole. Like you start in one place and then just like the way it goes and where you move to, you're like, how the fuck did we get from here to here? What on earth? But it is fascinating. It talks to creators on the platform, specifically PewDiePie. They talk to Susan, CEO of YouTube. And then they also talk to a user who like went really far down a far right rabbit hole and then somehow found themselves going into like left tube, like doing like a complete 180. It is really interesting just in terms of understanding how we have this like massive divide and how these platforms that we use and whilst this podcast was specifically focusing on YouTube but you know like Facebook and, and Instagram and Twitter they pretty much like all do the same thing where you will see one version of events and you will see one political opinion on your timeline and you know the the bridges between the two sides if we can say there are two sides then there's not that many of them and you'd be lucky if you found one in order to kind of like see the conversations that are happening elsewhere but yeah i thought that was a really fascinating podcast series would recommend and then my other favorite podcast at the moment is called mixed up and it's by my friend Emma, she's been on my channel a couple of times. She um, does a lot of stuff within sustainable fashion and charity shop fashion. And it's her and her friend, Nicole, talking about being mixed race and mixed race experiences. And they've done a whole bunch of episodes. I'm a bit behind on it at the moment, but honestly, the conversations that they have are really fascinating. And they've had a few guests on as well to talk about their experiences too. So would recommend. Next, I have some apps. Ooh, some app faves. So in lockdown, I have gotten much better at like tracking my menstrual cycle symptoms. And I use Clue for that, but that's literally just because they were the first period tracking app that I heard of, I think, when I first started like tracking my period and tracking my menstrual symptoms and my PMS and all of that. And so because Clue already has all my data, mm, you know, we love data. I've just continued using that and I've just gotten better at um, documenting like when my tits are hurting and when I have cramps because if you aren't actually bleeding, if you aren't having a period, you can still like track the other things. And then what I've been doing is on the day where I have cramps in my head, I'm like, okay, that would be day one of my period. So I just like pop in like, a day bleed so that the app like resets and like understands that like that was a whole cycle. I do wish that Clue or any of these period apps did have a way to kind of mark the beginning and end of a cycle, even though you don't have a period. Like I wish that was a thing because even if you don't bleed, sometimes you can still feel your full cycle in terms of like other PMS, like symptoms being them physical or emotional. So that's one improvement. But other than that, I'm like having a good time, like looking at all of my body data. Love it. The next app I wanna shout out is called Spacey. And this is one where you can basically write out Instagram captions that have breaks in them that, you know, like have paragraphs or line breaks in them. And you type it out in this app and then you convert it and then you can paste it into Instagram. I found this because I think I just like Googled um, how to write Instagram posts with like the breaks in the line. What are they called? Paragraphs, I don't know. And I came across this website and I used to have this website bookmarked and I would write everything in there and then I would convert it and copy and paste it into Instagram and then during lockdown or maybe just before lockdown, I noticed on the website it was like, I now have an app, it's much more seamless than this clunky website. And I think it was like two quid or something to download, but I'd used this person's free website for so long, I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna give you two pounds. And honestly, worth it. It is seamless, it is sleek, it is simple, it is fantastic. And then my final app favorite isn't an app, it's a website, but the website does work pretty well on mobile and it's called Storygraph and it's basically a new place that I am using um, to track the books that I read. I'm not a massive fan of Goodreads 
I think it's quite clunky. It's owned by Amazon. And I discovered Storygraph during lockdown. It is owned by a black woman. It's currently in beta. I'm not entirely sure how it's being funded. Maybe she's got investment. I don't know, but um, it suddenly got hugely popular. Like everyone like found out about it. That was probably when I found out about it too. And so um, there's lots of people on there. It's really beautiful. The way that you can review books, it asks you specific questions that you can just answer like yes, no, or it's complicated too, which I find easier because I don't really like writing out full reviews, but I like kind of like answering those questions about the books that I read. It also like creates a, recommendation shelf and it gives you data. So it gives you like a pie chart of all of the different types of books that you read and what moods you like the best. So I think, oh, hold on, let me, let me get this right. I'm gonna get it up. So it says, I mainly read fiction books that are reflective, emotional, and informative. Oh, informative. Maybe that's because of like the nonfiction books that I read. It wasn't that before. Oh, it's changed. When I first got it, it was mostly um, reflective, emotional and dark, which I thought was interesting, but we've gone from dark to informative. If you are a bit sick of Goodreads and you want to experiment with a new reading platform, would recommend Storygraph. I think what I'm gonna do for now is like keep updating Storygraph and Goodreads until the end of 2020, because, you know, just so I can see my final results for the reading challenge, mm. but then, I think from next year, I'm just gonna solely use Storygraph because I can't be bothered updating two platforms. I don't really know how it works in terms of like finding people's profiles. I'm gonna leave the link to my profile in the description and I think you can follow it. But so far you can't really search for people on it or you, you can't like search for people to follow, like just like find random people that you wanna follow. So I don't really know how that works, but Again, it's in beta, so maybe that's something that will be coming out soon, who knows? Okay, so that's enough of me talking about digital things. Let's get back to physical items that I can show you. And we are moving on to games. So like everybody else, Dan and I got a Switch in lockdown. We managed to get one at the normal retail price because Dan signed up to this like notification thing and he got an email one day being like, there is one in stock in Argos. And he like immediately was like, purchase. So yeah, we have a Switch. Dan has been playing many, many games on it, but the main ones that I've been playing have been Animal Crossing and Mario Kart. Best purchase 2020. I think I've maybe spoken about this before. We bought this before lockdown, I believe. It is what? War of the Ring, which is a Lord of the Rings board game. We have to extend our kitchen table in order to play it. It is so big. There are so many moving pieces. We have played this a lot during lockdown. Each time we play it, it's maybe like a three, four hour situation. But during lockdown, we did purchase an expansion, which is War of the Ring. And there's one more expansion that we want, but it's currently like out of print out of print for a board game, whatever that means. We love this game. One of you plays the Fellowship, I'm always the Fellowship, and one of you plays the Shadow Player, which Sauron, Saruman and everyone. Yeah, it feels really, really balanced. Although the last few times we played it, Dan has won, which is unfortunate, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. Um, actually, it's since we included the expansion that Dan has won every single game. I'm just practicing, I'm just getting used to it. But one of my favorite things about this is because we know the characters and because we like know the story from the movies, when you're playing the game, it's like the story is different. It's, it's kind of like creating your own fan fiction because like every game, something different happens. So it would be like, oh, like Aragorn and um, Boromir made it to Gondor like before everyone else and then like Boromir went off and did this thing and like oh Legolas and Gimli are off in this part of Middle Earth doing their own shenanigans and most of the time Gandalf is just hanging out in Fangorn Forest but yeah I enjoy it because you could basically like a rewriting the story depending on how the gameplay goes. I think the last time we played I lost because Frodo got corrupted by the ring and yeah it's like the movie ended where he goes it's mine and then <laughs> that's it so good okay that was a lot of stuff those are some of my lockdown favorites i know this has been a really fucking weird time still is a really weird time but i thought i would just share some 
good things some nice things that I have been enjoying um, despite it all. Do let me know in the comments any recommendations that you have, any things that you have been loving during the last few months, and I hope that you are all well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!